today's a big day. We're going to be carving the crest rail. There's a couple things we need to do before we actually get the four and a half inch angle grinder out of the carving wheel and, and uh, create a ton of dust. Um, so let's get started. You will notice the back slats are out. Uh, we don't need those slats in for this. Uh, what we do need is the crest rail and I have the crest rail clamped up um, to those lines that I drew earlier in the project. So what I'm going to do now is take my pen. For you guys, you're probably using pencils and that's fine. I'll just be using a pen throughout the project so you can see when I'm drawing a lot easier. It comes, comes through much better on the video. So I'm going to take the pen and mark out the back or the end of the rear legs on both sides as well as how much I'm protruding out in the front of the rear legs as well. Back here at the bench and um, you can see I've drawn my lines onto the sides of the crest rail and these are great. They're going to help us understand where the legs are beginning and ending as far as the, where the crest rail enters or butts up against the legs. Next thing to do is to start drawing some lines. So the first line I want to do is just to continue th this back of the uh, where the leg is just over a little bit. It's ever so slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Just bring that around on both sides. And just in case you weren't sure, I'm just going to quickly mark this the front. and the side of the rear, just in case I get confused. The next thing we want to do is mark out the reveal for the front. Uh, unfortunately, tendon location on my legs should have been back a little bit more. I wouldn't have to take as much wood off as I'm going to need to here. Um, so I'm going to take off about, about 3 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm going to come in here and mark out three thirty seconds of an inch we'll do that on both sides next I want to mark out another 3 30 seconds of an inch in from the back. So I'm going to mark out another line that's about 3 30 seconds of an inch deep or low. Okay. So now I got the roughly where I'm going to shoot for for the front and for the back um, for the reveal between the crest rail and the rear legs. And I want to do the same thing I did before and just bring these lines around ever so slightly. On both sides. Before I start marking out the curve here in the front, I want to bring the center line across the bottom. as well as the top. Let me walk you through what's going on here. The first thing you want to do is take your square and line the end of it up with the inside edge of the mortise. Once you have that lined up, take your pin and mark in a quarter of an inch. With this quarter of an inch mark on the center mortise, now you want to do the same thing on the two side mortises. Flush it up and mark in a quarter of an inch.
and do it on the other side as well. With those three marks made, now what we want to do is strike a line, and you can do that from the other side like I am right now, and strike a line at that quarter of inch mark all the way down the length of that mortise. Reset the ruler on your square and do the same thing for the side slats as well. With those three lines now marked, we can now take a straight edge and connect them. So take your straight edge and line it up with the farthest inward point of the side mortise and connect it to the line you made earlier for where your reveal would be and draw a line. Now do the same thing on the other side. With those two lines now drawn, what you want to do is just by hand Take your pin, or for me a marker, and connect the rest of the lines together. Just eyeball it. You just want to make sure you're sloping in a little bit. You'll see that I'm having the curve go from the innermost point, which would be the center of the mortise, for the center back slat, and having it curving outward towards the other lines that we drew from the side slats. And here's a view of our curve on the front. So we're going to do the same thing on the back. We're going to take our square and draw in a quarter of an inch from the back wall and make a mark there. After that we'll come to the two mortises on the sides and we'll also draw back another quarter of an inch there. With those marks now made we can take our long straighter edge and connect the edge of our crest rail to the beginning of our mortise. I know it's really straight, but we'll 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 hand, freehand it and shape it up and change the shape in a little bit. And then just by hand, we'll connect the ends of the mortises to the center of the center mortise. After you're done with that, then you come in and add a little bit of a curve to all of this. And we'll do a bit more um, when we're actually carving, to, and you'll see how the shape all comes together. Okay, it's time to concentrate on the top. Now, if you look at the original chair and the pictures, basically what happens is, you know, we're angled like this, we're straight. I mean, we're curved in, but it's pretty straight here. And then all of a sudden, it really comes back in this big curve towards the back of the, of the headrest. And it becomes very thin towards the back. And then it, on the back side, it, it comes in like this. So we come up, we come up, we come up. And then we start to curve to the back as well. So what I want to do here is I want to mark out how deep this curve is going to be. And it's actually going to be pretty considerable. So we're going to come in and mark um, an inch deep here. Now that we have that line, actually I'm going to extend it a little bit farther. I want the line to run the end on each side to start. Okay. 
So we're, what's going to happen, once again, is we're going to come up here straight. And we have to stay relatively straight. We can't start curving yet because we have to pass these mortises. Then right around here, we're going to start curving back. It's going to be a big pronounced curve. So in order to do that curve, we also got to curve the, the sides here as well inward. So we're going to curve this way all the way down. So that you have to draw in by hand. And uh, before we draw that in by hand, let's draw some steps to help us connect these multiple layers. The first thing we can do to help us draw these different steps is we can bring up the end locations, the edge, the outer edges of this mortise on both sides. Okay, with those up, then we want to know if we're going to keep this shape here relatively the same for a long amount of time, uh, or this amount of time, then we know how deep we need to be right here. And if you turn your piece around, you can find out how much that is. So I'm just going to pull that measurement right off the actual piece itself. Like this. Take the square, tighten it up. I'm going to mark in from the back. So right about, you can see this. So right about here is where I should be. So I connect the lines. And have an idea about that first part of the curve. And do the same thing over here. We'll draw that in. And now what we need to do is connect these. So I'm just going to try to curve it from you know, about halfway between this distance here on both sides. So let's find out what half is. So this is roughly three inches long. So I'm going to come in about an inch and a half, which is where I was eyeballing it earlier. So right about there. Right about there. And then I'm just going to try to Create a nice curve this might be better for you to see There we go. So what we're going to end up doing is carving this front part here and then moving towards the center and then bringing everything in. So we'll go over that as we're carving. Now, now that we got this front part, let's deal with the back. So if we are here and our curve, I want this back portion so I'm you know, as I said, when you when you mill this piece up, try to get it as thick as possible. And I was really um, any thinner, I would have been in trouble here. So I kind of want to go back a half an inch. So that's a half an inch back from my line. So I'm right there. So an inch and a half is the mini bare minimum um, for this piece. So now that's kind of where my back is going to be. And I want to do the same thing here to create a curve. So we'll do, we'll flip this guy over. And uh, we'll take these lines, bring them all the way around. Or up it is. Do 
do the same thing on the other side. And with my straight edge, I'm going to pull the distance here. So I got that set up. I'm going to tighten it down and then bring this measurement across on both sides. And we'll just connect these guys. So those connected, I'm just going to try to find a nice curve between here and here. Flip it over, that may help. Yeah, I actually want to bring it in a little bit more. So I gotta go straight for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Let's connect them roughly. So same thing, I got a nice curve here, and we're going to get a nice curve over here. So remember what we're doing is we're going to remove material from the front, do this curve, and then basically up here when we get to the back side, we're going to really just come in here very lightly and then down, uh, removing material mainly on this side, and that'll create this deep back curve for us that you'll see uh, right here. Sorry this up and then we're going really deep over here. So I think we look pretty good at the bottom. Here's the uh, sides where we're coming up and we're coming into this curve. We've got a really nice rough curve right now up here and then we're coming up and we're coming into this curve here too. Now, before I forget I do want to bring the center line down across the rear as well. Okay here's my setup. I've got a board clamped to my table, and then I have the workpiece clamped to the table to the board. Um, we're going to start on one side. I'm going to flip it over, work on the other side, and then I'll work down. I have a four and a half inch angle grinder here. It's, right now, it's unplugged. And I have a flat carving wheel, uh, not one of the really round ones. I have one of those. Those work great too. But I have a, a flatter carving wheel here. And I, those tend to, I tend to have more control with that over a shape like this. 
so I prefer using the flat. And then eventually, once we do a whole bunch of carving, we're going to switch over to some sanding discs and do some final smoothing with the grinder that is. There'll be some more sanding later, but we'll do that and we'll finish that off um, with the sanding discs. So a couple of quick words here about safety. Number one is um, this thing is spinning at 25,000 RPMs. That's fast. And it can do a lot of damage fast. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to like bear down and really try to take a lot out. Finesse. You'll see me. I tend to do body action movements. So I'll start doing some work. I'll see and I'll move my body with the uh, angle grinder. Um, don't ever let go of it. Okay. Uh, just hold on to it and when you're done let it spin down all the way and then put it down. Don't let go. This thing's moving. It only has a blade guard in the back, not all the way around. Um, this is the way they come. So just hold on to it and let it spin down and then put it down. Um, next thing is you got to be able to see while you're doing this. So when I'm doing this work, I tend to wear a set of goggles. Um, protect my eyes and to keep all this dust from flying in. It still flies in, but it's a lot less than I can see while it's happening. While I'm doing the work, that is. And of course, I don't know where they are, but oh, they're back over there. But a respirator and uh, protect your ears with a headset. So um, let's get to it. Once the angle grinder is up to speed, I'll make a first few initial passes across the entire length width of the crest rail just to establish some first cuts. Remember, we're not removing much material from the edge, but much more from the center. With those first cuts established, now I start working from the center of the piece towards the edges. What you'll notice here is that as I make each pass, I start to pass towards the center, pull towards my body, and then lift up. And you'll notice that the carving wheel is not removing material for all the way from the center to the edge but instead I'm finessing into it or feathering into it. As I continue to do this, I check my line, and more importantly, or as importantly, I'm making sure that I take even amounts from all sides, from both the top and the bottom. Here I'm checking my lines, I'm making sure I'm close, and then I will start in and carve more from the actual other side in. Checking my lines once again. I just want to continue to work back to these lines. They are the rules here, they're boundaries. And you don't want to carve below any of the lines. Instead, you want to carve right up to the black lines themselves. Whew! Okay. I turned it around, and this side, when I record it from this way, you're going to see me working. Maybe we'll see the lines that are here. Basically what I'm going to do, what I did on the other side, is I think I made a light pass. And I'll do another light pass. But then what I'm doing is I'm taking more material away from towards the center here. And what's left of the center, I'll probably make bring that mark around again in a second. Um, and then I'm fairing up. Coming in, and I'm pulling up. Pulling up. So I come in a little bit light, pull up. And I just keep fairing to create a curve from the inside to the outside. And I'm working back here too at the same time. I'm just trying to create the same curve all around. And then I'll worry about, when we flip this around again, removing material in this direction. So I'm going to get all the safety gear on again, zoom it in so that you guys can see the lines here as I'm moving across. Like the piece flipped around so you can see the lines. You'll see once again I start to carve just some material away from the edge to establish my first cuts. And now you'll see me start working from or closer towards the center back to the edge. Once again, 
You'll see I pull up the angle grinder every time I make a pass. There's not a lot of material to remove at those edges for me, so I don't want to take too much away. So I actually am pulling up before I reach the edge. Here you'll see I'm slowly just feathering in or creating that nice carving or the circle towards the center of the piece. You'll see that I'm carving at the center and slowly removing that new center line I drew for myself. You'll notice that try and take even amounts away. You can't my line. I let the carving wheel slow down and stop completely and now I'm feeling the piece throughout the entire width, checking to see what's high, what's low, where I should concentrate a little bit of extra time in. Now that I've marked the high spots in my head, I know where they are, I'll come back in and try to take a couple of those down, as well as finesse the curve. You see I pull the, the angle grinder away and I lean over, that's when I'm looking at the lines. I'm trying to see where I am. You see here I'm carving from over center back towards, and that's where I'm trying to finesse the curve. Okay, I've established this first curve here, and now what we're going to do is work on the curve coming back. What I'm going to do is place the camera so it's behind me sideways so you'll be able to see me rocking back and forth to and carving downward here to create this next curve. Um, with the angle grinder up to speed I start to approach and what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to take material away from just about the halfway point up from the crest rail towards the top and you'll see that I tip the angle grinder down trying to remove material to create start creating that curve. As I continue to remove material here, you'll continue to see me dropping the angle grinder down. Just trying to start to create that curve. And feather in from the center back. Whatever I do on one side I come and do to the other side. I don't want to spend too much time working on one side. I want to do whatever I did on that side, remember it, do it on the other, and that way you have a nice symmetrical piece. After doing a little bit of work to start my curve, now I'm going to come in and really remove a whole bunch of material away from the top of the curve. I'm going to do this from one side, and then turn myself around, and then try to even out that material on the other side as well. You'll see that I'm only taking material away from the far right as I'm facing it. And now they start to work the piece. I'm coming in once again and continuing to try to create that curve backwards, taking material from one side and moving around to the other side, making sure I take off even amounts of material from each side. I check my lines and reattack. trying to establish that curve now from the top to the bottom while keeping with my lines. Here you'll see I'm moving material from the top edge and not necessarily or much from the inside and you'll see me turn around here in a second and do that from the other side as well. I'm just trying to create that final dip in the curve. You'll see I keep carving down to the line. Whatever I do on one side, I do to the other side. I'm inspecting everything, seeing where I need to go, and then now I start approaching on one side. And I'm just trying to fit to that outside curve here. And I'll work the same side on the on my right. I can't emphasize more, whatever you do on one side, come back and do to the other side. I 
have a little bit of material of feather or, or removed from the center. Now we're getting really close. A little more inspection and just trying to feather that material back down. As you can see while I was working this, I um, I created this kind of pillow here. Let me get a pencil. But you'll notice it starts just above where um, the end of the, the mortises are, the depth of the mortise. So what I'm trying to do is create this curve to come down and to follow my line. So sometimes I had to clear a bunch of material at an angle and then come back in and smooth towards that material again. So, looks pretty good. I'm really close to my lines. Um, it's a nice curved shape here. I like how it's falling back. And um, I'm actually going to change heads out real quick and smooth this out up here on the top. And then we'll flip this over and work on the back. So I'm going to change those heads out and then I'll show you about how I smooth this out. Okay, I changed out the grinding wheel for this um, sandpaper pad. It's flexible paper, so it'll move a little bit. And I'm just going to come back over, and I'm going to be able to put more of the surface down against the wood and create a smoother, flatter surface here. Um, and I'll just smooth out this little bit here, turn it around, smooth out the other side, flip it over, and then do a little smoothing coming down. This by no means is the final step here, um, smoothing wise, but it definitely is the beginning. I'm over here at the bench and while I'm looking at it, I just wanted to attack the surface a little bit more but with um, some smoke shaves right now. I, I just want to clean this up. I just want to attack the surface. We'll obviously, have, well not obviously, but we'll have to sand it a little bit later. But I want to just kind of try to smooth it out. I saw where there's some dips that were a little uneven and where I may have pulled a little bit too much on one side. I just want to clean that up right now. So uh, get the smoke shave. I'll zoom in and we'll take a look at that. So basically I'm just working towards the middle right now. Just trying to smooth out the surface. I'm going to flip around and work from the other side. I can, I'm running my hands over and I'm feeling that I'm high here. And when I look in this direction, I can see that I've got more of a curve over here than I do here. So I've got to work this down a little bit. check this again let me show you what I'm seeing so if you look I'm just a little too high over here compared to this side right so what I want to do is just bring down this curve to match this curve over here okay so just gonna do a little more spoke shape work and bring this curve down Okay, I'm still a little high and I think part of it's coming from here. I need to dip down here to match the dip that's here. So I'm going to move material in this direction over here. 
It's a little bit higher over here. Okay, we're getting closer, but um, the dip is more now, but I also have a deeper dip here than I do here. So I'm going to work in this direction down, and move and try to match the curve on this side. Okay, that looks really good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this curving. I pulled out my block plane and you may think I'm nuts but what I'm going to do is attack this section right here and try to smooth this out make it flatter I'm going to skew the plane have a very light cut and if it's skewed it allows me to come across and then down I'm not trying to take a full shaving here at all. I'm just trying to use the body to hit the high spots. And then smooth it down this way. And I'm significantly higher over here than I am here. And um, I can feel it. Okay, I finished smoothing the front face on the bench and I flipped it over. I got the rear facing me now. I've clamped it down on both sides. Uh, what I'm going to do is start with the center. And then once I finish the center, uh, at least the initial carving, I'll then work on each side and smooth down to the sides. So um, let's go carving. It's time to carve the indent in the back. What I like to do is carve from the top down, creating an indentation towards the center. You'll see here that I start doing the four, doing work on one side, and then doing work on the other. I continuously get deeper and deeper, carving this indentation. And the indentation is the back curve from the top towards the bottom. So I just continuously get deeper and deeper working back to my lines, but making sure not to go below my lines. Whew. Okay, I carved the indent, and now what I'm going to do is work um, backwards from the indent to the um, edge of the crest rail where it would be meeting the uh, rear legs. So it's going to take material away downward and feathering that into the indent and creating a, a circle there, a half circle on that side and a half circle on the other for the full curve. So uh, let's do some more carving. Well, it's time to remove a lot of wood. As you can see from the lines, there's a lot of wood to get rid of, and I'm just removing it evenly from the bottom to the top. Here I'm just trying to bring in that curve. I'm always checking my lines. See, I'm checking them right now, I'm looking, and then I come back and start to move more material as I move towards those lines. I'm just fairing up this curve here a little bit, checking my lines and just making sure I don't go beyond those lines and just trying to bring that curve in. I'm just doing some final passes now, getting real close to the lines. Dare not take too much material, and just lightly touching it from side to side. Put the, the press rail over, and it's time to take the other side 
same way. Move a lot of material and then just start working back to your line. Here I'm doing just what I said, I'm walking back to the lines, bringing in the curve, making sure that I take off even amounts from both the top to the bottom, and I'm just lightly feathering in that curve, coming back to my lines and checking, making sure I just don't go too deep. Okay, we uh, carved and carved and carved in the back, and um, I don't want to do the sanding blocks. I got really close to the lines, probably maybe a little too close in a couple spots, which is fine. Um, yeah, but so I'm going to just work on this over here, the spoke shaves. I have this little quarter inch piece of MDF here, and it's going to help support as I come down, um, support it from tipping. And I'm just going to work in one direction, and then I'll flip around and work in the other direction. So let's get to it. I'm just going to use the spoke shave and head in the downward direction. Yeah, scrubbing the high, high spots. talk to you about sanding this thing I'm just trying to fair up this curve over here that I have and I'm using a um, scraper the money's gooseneck scrapers and I'm just using it to push in down towards the flat here to really create this curve I'm looking for you know when you're let me sit down when you're working on this project and anywhere, I guess, in woodworking, it's hard to add wood. Um, it's easy to take wood away, but it's hard to add wood. So when you guys actually do this, I recommend that you try to stay away from your lines, you know, leave extra room, and then bring it down by hand. It's um, going to take you potentially a little longer. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but more so what it's going to do is protect you from going too far and um, it's really nice too to connect with the wood with, with um, some hand tools as well not just power tools the whole time so I'm going to keep working this curve right here and then I'll come around and work the other side of the curve as well and uh, try to fair this up a little bit and then I'll come in and, and talk to you about sanding this with um, this really awesome pad that it, that I have and you can buy it for about 16 bucks. Uh, I'm using the uh, gooseneck because I want to create a, it's a little bevel right here. Well, not bevel, but a little bit of a curve. Okay, I think I've done all the damage I can, and um, I'm pretty happy. I got a nice curve back here, and the back's curved, and I like it. Um, yeah, it looks good. So let's walk through sanding. Um, I got this uh, mat here because I was protecting the crest rail when I was doing a little bit of work with the spoke shave when I wanted to clamp it down. Um, but I also have it here so I can do some sanding. 
And I want to talk to you about this bad boy. It's from uh, Merca. It's um, an Abernet. It's for part of their Abernet line of um, uh, sanding discs. And uh, these are amazing because it's a half an inch thick piece of foam. Uh, it's a backing pad. And what's great about it is that half an inch thick piece of foam, it allows you to ride the curves. It'll contour itself to the curve as the sander's going. So you take this, you throw it on your regular sander. It's got holes in it for um, uh, if you have a dust collector hooked up to your sander. And just let the weight of the sander do the work. Don't press too hard. You're going to take a lot of material away really fast. Um, the other thing I want to say is watch out when you get close to the edges with this thing. It does have a tendency to um, curve over and it'll then curve that part of your work um, as far as the edges is concerned. So let's just take some nice passes and uh, sand this guy. I just put 220 on it, so I'm going to sand it 220. I know I got a little bit of tracks and whatnot and marks made from the uh, spoke shave and the um, scraper, and uh, but a 220 with some light passes on it, those should disappear real quick. <laughs> was a very successful day. Um, Crestrail looks great. We've got nice reveals around all four sides, um, inside where the crest rail meets the leg. The back is in and it looks great. Um, we got the nice, we got a, a little bit of, a, we got a curve here in the front, we're curving in the back, we got to the back, we got a curve in the back. It's really good. A um, couple of points of advice for you guys when you're doing this. Um, one, if you've never carved before, you're not comfortable carving of an angle grinder, go slow. There's no need to try to rush this. I've been carving uh, parts for chairs, seats for years, and um, the more I do it, the better I get. And I still have mistakes sometimes, so those happen. And one of the best ways to prevent them from happening is going slow, not trying to take too much material off at any one time. So with that, tip number two is check your lines and stay away from the lines. Make sure you don't go actually go on the lines or touch them. You want to be just proud of them. Come back to your bench, use some hand tools, you know, some spoke shaves or rasps or whatever you have, and throw out those curves without the grinder. Now I know you saw me take a um, sanding uh, wheel and come to that and try to smooth out, well not try, but smooth out the front. And I've done that a lot and I'm comfortable with it. And even when I smoothed that out, I still stayed away from my lines. I was just above them. Uh, and that may be a good way for you to approach this too, is get a 36 grit or a 60 grit sanding wheel and take this on with that instead of the, the grinding wheel. Uh, you'll take less material off at a time. It'll take a little bit longer, but um, it may be more comfortable for you. And respect the four and a half inch angle grinder. Make sure you know where your hands are all the time and just hold on to that thing. If you gotta stop and let it go or stop, um, hold on to it till it's finished and then let it, let it go, put it down. Make sure to unplug it when you're ch if you change um, the heads on the angle grinder, whatever the carving mechanism you're using is. And uh, you gotta have some sharp hand tools when you're doing this too. It's nice to have a really sharp spoke shave. I actually took a couple of minutes and just resharpened both blades on both the flat and the curved um, Lee Nielsen spoke shaves that I have. And um, You'll do a good job. Don't worry about it. Just go slow and make sure you have a lot of time to do this too. It took me a whole day to film this. 
Um, it may take you guys a whole day to do the work. So make sure you have enough time. Don't try to sneak this in with an hour there, an hour there kind of thing. This is a big task. And make sure you have enough ventilation in the shop too. I had the windows open and uh, in between I actually opened up the garage and I uh, took my, I don't know where it is, but I blew out with my um, blower, blew out the shop and got some of this uh, dust out of here too. So make sure you have enough air circulation. I used something to cover my eyes when I did it because I need to be able to see for all this dust flying around. I don't want my glasses getting uh, uh, dust all over them. And um, that's it. So just take it slow, do it. You guys do great. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you come up with.